Creating a portfolio would typically be very difficult, but Dreamweaver makes it easy because there's one actually built in. So the first thing I need to do is to create a portfolio page. Taking this index HTML, we're gonna save it as portfolio in the same folder for my local site here. And then notice I need to toggle the portfolio button on and turn off home. So right down here, and I could always click on it, but right in here, active. That is the class that turns it on. So I'm gonna cut that out. And right down here for portfolio, I'm gonna paste it in, right? So you can see it highlights it. And then I actually need to change this href to index dot html to make sure you can go back to the home button all right now for the content i really honestly need to clear a lot of this out and i could do that easily just by selecting it delete again a side left i'm making sure i'm clicking on that section right clicking on that expanding this out right i've removed it all so really i just have the nav and the footer and then all of this space and now what I want to do, I want to insert my portfolio. So if you go over to the insert panel, bootstrap components right in here. Oh, look, carousel. That is the portfolio bootstrap component. Clicking once and it adds it right in here. Okay. You can see it all here. There's actually some absolute paths. Anytime you see something that says file, that's not good because it's only going to work on my desktop. So what you want to do is you just save all. You usually get in the habit of doing that. It says, hey, you know what? We're going to put that file in your images folder for your local site. I'll click OK. And you can see that disappears. It actually puts this carousel placeholder image right in there. Okay. So far, so good. Now I want to dive into some of this content. But before I do that, I actually want to preview it. We'll take a look at it in my browser. Again, there's that placeholder carousel. This is looks like a header, and then we have a caption, and then we can actually click through the three different images, and we can even click on these little buttons as well. This is pretty fantastic. I mean, I love this. So all I really need to do is swap out these images and this text as well. So I'm going to close that. Now, where are these images? Well, if you have access to the exercise files in the assets folder, you'll notice quite a few images right in here. We have these different carousel images, one through five. I'm just going to take all of those, copying those, and then going into my images folder and pasting them right in here. So I want to make sure all of my assets are in the images folder. Make sure they're there. You could use your own. These might be, well, roughly the same size. They can be different sizes. They're still going to work. I'm just going to remember this Carousel 1 JPEG name. But I'll tell you what, Dreamweaver does something really cool in that case. So I'm going to come in here. In fact, I'm just going to select this file name, hit delete. In fact, I'm going to delete that forward slash. Now, when I add that forward slash, it actually gives me code hinting for all of the images. So I can find a carousel one JPEG, adding that just like that. So it's really easy. And honestly, that's typically what the problem is, is you're naming things wrong. It's just these little things that get in the way in terms of breaking your site or not being able to set it up correctly. Just like that, we can see again, carousel one, there's the image. And from there, I can start modifying some of this content. So this happens to be box boy. And I can have the H3 tag, or I could just eliminate it altogether. Because really all I want is a caption, and really it's just going to be the title of the art. So you can see that there. Just like that. Sewing machine, eliminating. Again, H3, I can change that to an H2 or an H1, whatever I want to do. Last one in here. Success wall, taking that, pasting that right in here. So it's just changing content, okay? Now, keep in mind, these are a different size. So we're gonna see what this looks like. In fact, we can kind of take a peek right in here. Sure enough, there is what I'm calling box boy, and I have this gap right here. So I'm gonna take a look at it, just kind of see what's going on. I want that to go clear up to the edge. So scrolling up, 
I can see there's padding from the top for the body style. I'm going to take that down to 50, just like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save everything, preview in a browser, and you can see how big this is, but it fills the area because this is responsive. So even as I scale it down, you can see obviously it changes. And it's actually automatically advancing. But let's take a look at some of those controls because I even still have that background image back there. So how do we add more images? And how do we say, for instance, remove that background? That's probably what I want to do in this case. And that's what I'm going to do right now. For removing that background, I'm going to go to the CSS Designer panel. Right up here at the top, I want to add a new CSS source, define it in the page, okay? Because I'm going to make this page specific. Defining it in the page, adding a selector, and in this case, it's just going to be called body. So typing in body, hitting enter twice, and then what's happening is there happens to be an image, okay? So background image that's happening. So what I want to do is I just want to put a pound sign right in there. So it's actually not going to show me anything, but I can always replace that. But this is what's written. In fact, I can save everything and just take a look in the browser. Even as I scale it down, you can see there's no longer that image back there. And I can even just change that from a gray to something else. But all in all, that looks pretty good. Let's look at adding additional items because as I scroll down, I can see here are my data targets, right? So I have zero, one, and two. If I want to add more, it's just a matter of copying that, pasting it, and now I can have data three, for instance. And I do want to just keep that as carousel one. And then right down here, I want to make sure I'm selecting this div. It's cool that as I select this div class, it gives me the start and the end. But essentially what I want to do is take this, copy it, and then paste it below just like that. And I can always indent that or bring that back just like that. And then it's just a matter of changing this to four. There's that image. Change the alt tag. The alt tag is what actually gets displayed when you sort of roll over that image and then pasting that right there. Now, there were five images that I pasted in, so I'm going to do this one more time. You could paste in as many as you want, just jumping in there, changing those numbers, making sure that data set looks good. And again, that's just going to give me the ability to hit any one of those buttons below the image and toggle to that image, right? So here's five. Collage. And there. And typically, as you're working in this sort of scenario where you have all these various divs and everything's kind of like nested in, you may or may not have that right. Who knows? What you can do is you can come right over here and you can format the source code. So I'm going to apply source formatting, and that's going to indent everything where it needs to go and kind of clean it up and make it look nice and neat. So with that done, I think it looks fantastic. I could save everything, previewing it in Chrome. As you can see, there we have all of my different little buttons. I can click through those, and you can see those, again, just jump to the appropriate one. And so obviously you can see how easy it is to integrate a carousel or a portfolio for your website.